The goal for this video is to find the area under the curve y is equal to x to the third power from 0 to 1. And we'll use rectangles to help us out. And at the end, of course, I'll give you guys the bonus. <laughs> use integrals to find the area. So now let's go ahead and look at a bigger picture. So let's see just the first quadrant, which is like this, y equals x to the third power. We will be using n equal width rectangles because we are going from 0 to 1. So the whole thing is 1 divided by n, right? So that way we can see how big each width has to be for the rectangles. And we will just denote that by delta x. So this is the width of each rectangle. And again, you should technically do 1 minus 0 over n, and you get 1 over n. This means each time we go up, it has to be going up by 1 over n. So the first x value here, it will be from 0 to 1 over n. And then when we go up again, it will be right here, which is 2 over n. And then the next one is 3 over n, and so on, so on, so on. The last one is 1, but let's purposely write it as n over n, so that they have the same denominator. And now, let's go ahead and find out the area in the following way. We will need an expression for the sum of the areas of these n rectangles first. What rectangles are we talking about? I prefer to do a right end point rectangle because we can actually get a rectangle for the first one. But if you do it left end, it's okay too. For the right end point, it means that we start, you see, we have 0 and 1 over n. You pick the number on the right. Right here, that's the x value. You go up, hit the curve, and then you go to the left. And then we draw a rectangle. This rectangle has width 1 over n, so let's go ahead and put that down, 1 over n. But what's the height though? The height is a vertical distance, which is the y value. We know the x value is 1 over n. Just go ahead and put that right here, we can get y. So that will be 1 over n to the third power. So that's the area of the first rectangle. And then we continue. The second one, the width right here is again 1 over n from here to here. So let's go ahead and write that down. In fact, everybody will have width 1 over n because it's equal width. But for the height, the x value that we're using is 2 over n, right? The right end, and then you go up, hit the curve, and then you draw the rectangle like so. And then we can just put this right here, which is 2 over n to the third power. What's the next one? Again, 1 over n for the width, and then the height will be 3 over n to the third power, and so on, so on, so on. So we don't need to write them down anymore. We can just put on dot, dot, dot. And right here, we also put on plus dot, dot, dot. However, we should put down the very last one. So we put down when x is equal to 1, go up, and then we draw a rectangle like so. The width right here will still be 1 over n, so let's put that down. And then the height is n over n to the third power. I know it's equal to 1 inside, but again, we want to have the same denominator. Cool. Now, in order to get this area, how many rectangles do we need? Not 10, not 100, but we're talking about infinity. If you tell me 1 billion, it's still not enough. We have to have infinity. And when we are talking about infinity, yes, we have to do the limit, just like how much shirt. So right here, we take the limit as n goes to infinity. All right. Whenever we're talking about infinity, we take the limit. Yeah. So this would be an expression that will help us to find this area. And now, of course, that's computed because this is actually doable within a reasonable amount of work. You'll see. But it's always going to be just a good gesture to write down the limit as n goes to infinity. So we will do that. Just keep that in mind. OK, everybody has 1 over in red. So let's factor that out. In the meantime, you see that everybody has the n on the bottom here. But technically, it's n to the third power. So we can also factor out the n to the third power. So let's put it right here. And now what's left? For the first term, we will have 1 to the third power left. 
The next term, we will have 2 to the third power left. What's the next term? 3 to the third power, and then 4 to the third power, and so on, so on, so on. So we see the pattern, so we can just put on plus dot dot dot. And then, the last one is n to the third power. Cool. So this is what we have. We can multiply it. So again, let's go ahead and write that down. And one more time, let's write down the limit as n goes to infinity. And then we have the parentheses, and then we have 1 over n to the fourth power. And then for all this right here, there's a very nice formula to add up the sum of the first n cubes. And if you guys would like, you guys can check out my other video for the proof and also for the uh, reason behind it. But right here, I'll just tell you guys, this result is going to be parentheses n times n plus 1 over 2 raised to the second power. All right, so all this becomes that. Okay, then we just have to kind of clean things up a little bit. And we will see this right here is the limit as n goes to infinity. So let's go ahead and write that down. And uh, let's see what we have all together. On the bottom, 2 squared is 4. And then we have the n to the fourth power. So that's good. On the top, we will have to multiply this out. So put a 2 here, put a 2 here because this is just a multiplication. So that means we have n to the second power times n plus 1 to the second power. And remember right here, we will have to multiply it out. n plus 1 times n plus 1, you get n squared plus 2n plus 1. And then finally, we can distribute the n squared. So we get n to the fourth power plus 2n to the third power plus n squared. Good. You know what this is? This is everybody's favorite calculus question. As we have the limit and n goes to infinity. To do so, we just have to care about the highest power of n on the top, which is n to the fourth power. And then the bottom here is full n to the fourth power. Guess what? They have the same power, so they cancel out, yeah? But remember, we still have the 1 over 4. And yes, that is the answer. So the answer for this area here is 1 over 4. And then we are done. Just like that. Cool, huh? All right, so this right here is the rectangle ways to do it. And this is also called, this is technically called the Riemann sum. And now let's talk about how we can get the area by using integration. So how do we do this? Well, this area is going to be equal to the integral going from 0 to 1. And then we have to integrate x to the third power, and then we put down the dx. This is like the height of the rectangle. This is the width of the rectangle. It's like the super version of the delta x. To compute this, we will have to use the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, meaning that first find the antiderivative of this, and to do so, we can just use the reverse power rule, meaning that add 1 to the power, 3 plus 1 is 4, and divided by the new power, so we have 1 over 4 like this. Okay, and we don't need to worry about the plus constant, because they will cancel anyway. We will just get 1 over 4 x to the fourth power. And don't forget that we are going to be plugging 0 and 1, but be sure you're plugging the 1 first. So this right here is going to give us 1 over 4. Put a 1 in here, and then raise that to the fourth power. And then we are going to minus, put a 0 here. We have 1 over 4 times 0 to the fourth power. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just 0. 1 to the fourth power is just 1. So oh no, this right here, yes is 1 over 4. Hmm? Of course, the same answer because we're talking about the same area, all right? Okay, so hopefully this right here helps. And if you guys need more uh, calculus tutorial, check out my playlist over there. See you guys there.